guys, welcome back to the Fly Dudes Vlog. Today we have Fly Tying Friday. And uh, since a recent trip that I went on was at Pyramid Lake, I figured I'd tie um, some fly, or a fly, particular fly, that absolutely slays out there, but honestly is just a recent application out there. It's a super effective pattern that's been used for quite a while by a lot of the guys in like British Columbia and all those places where people fish these. Um, but essentially it's just a booby fly, which is a, um, so it's a foam head streamer pattern. Typically it can be like a dragonfly. You could, I tie mine as like big streamers because I'll fish a heavy sinking line and then it'll sink and then it'll sit perfectly in the water and it'll kind of, gives it just a really, really good action in the water. Basically what I have is I have these Rainey's um, pre-cut booby round eyes and they make these in round and like a squared uh, eye. And these are the large ones because, like, like I said, I'm tying streamers out of them. But they make them in every color you can imagine. Um, and essentially, for me at least, this pattern is, like, super, super simple. I just tie it with a couple materials. It is obviously the booby eyes. Um, I tie it on a, say, a Mustad Stinger hook. If I can find them in my little... There we go. There they are. Got it. Yeah, so it's the Mustad Stinger. And I tie mine in, like, a size 6. Because if I'm fishing a lake for bass or for trout, like a six is a pretty good all-around size for like some sort of bait fish pattern. So essentially, it's just the hook. You'll have these boobies eyes, booby, booby eyes, obviously. And then I just tie mine with a craft fur tail and then a, like an overwing um, that'll go over the top of the fly. And I, I'll be tying this one in white because this is actually going to be a fly that I'm going to be fishing for some wiper um, here in the next couple months. So I have. Again, Rainey's makes a sweet craft fur that's super long fibers, so you don't have to mess with me like having a bunch of really short fibers that are kind of, can get kind of annoying. Um, and then I use Snake River Fly in Pocatello. Brandon was the guy I actually shot the first vlog with. Um, they make this dubbing called Zero Gravity Dubbing, and it's essentially just some, it's a mix of like an ice dub with some marabou, but I'm so hooked on this material. Literally every single fly that I tie, if it's a streamer, if it has some sort of plume on it, I will just do a dubbing loop with this material because I love it so much. So let's get started on this. Let me get you guys a little better perspective. Perfect. So I'm just going to tie this with like a 210 denier thread. We'll just throw a thread base down just like that. And it'll just typically sit. I just do a, a big base on the top where I'm going to close in the eyes. And what I'll do is I'll add a little bit of thread wraps here because I don't want these to spin on me. But basically what we're going to do, take these eyes, and we're going to tie them on. And this is like a really nice hard foam that they have. It's not super squishy, so it actually makes tying in really, really easy. And you're going to figure eight this just like you would lead barbell eyes or however, whatever else you figure eight in place. And then I add a couple wraps like this just to get a little bit of a base underneath it so that it's kind of seated there a little bit better. And then a dab of super glue and you're good to go this make sure that this is nice in place the one thing with foam to keep in mind is that you can't really cinch down crazy hard on it or else you can cut through that foam but I still haven't had an issue with that with this Rainey's foam either so we'll throw a little thread base on the back okay you want to go right to where the hook, bend of the hook starts and so basically all that you do at this point is you'll add your craft fur there you go um, and what I like to do is when you're working your way through craft fur, start at the bottom and work your way up like this. This is a relatively new pack of craft fur, but I'll show you. You start down here and you work your way up so you're not missing any fibers as you're cutting through this and you get the full length of the fibers that you're using. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll take this and I'll cut this at the base. And then even though it's technically synthetic, craft fur will still get some little hairs that are stuck here. So if you look, you can pull out a lot of these under hairs that will be a total pain in the butt when it comes to like really getting this fly the profile right. So I'll do that on one end and I'll go on this end and I'll pull a couple of these fibers that are a little bit too long. And again, this fly is relatively large, but I'll tie this tail in right here. Just like that. Okay, so get your tail in, and then I'll just kind of twist that up usually. 
do that. Okay. So we got that just like that, right? So it's pretty simple thus far. And then what we'll do is we'll take this uh, Snake River Fly Zero Gravity Dub. And what I'll do is I'll throw a, couple, I'll throw a dubbing loop in. And then I'll grab my little dubbing twister, which this is just like a rising uh, Kelly Gallup tool. Um, but it has a loop, which is what's important. So I'll twist this up. And it's kind of important when I'm doing this, if you don't have a dubbing spinner that... Uh, that has, um, let's see if you can see this anywhere. You can see that this thread stuck on my finger, right? Yeah, like that. Uh, you wanna keep your finger in between that to keep it open, unless you have one of the dubbing loop spinners that actually will pry it open itself. Let's make life a lot easier. And we'll basically all we'll do, we'll get a nice big clump of this, because we still want this fly to have a pretty decent profile. We'll add this to the loop, just like that, like that. And then you'll spread it out and get it nice and even. Just like that. And this is still probably going to need a little bit more. So what I'll do is I'll come back down. Grab a little bit more dubbing. And add that dubbing to the loop. And then again, I'll spread it out a little bit more. So that I get a little more bang for the buck on this. Okay. Okay. And then basically you'll just twist it up just like this. And I'm just spinning on this back half uh, with my little uh, tool here, my little gallop tool. And I'll spin this up quite a bit. And what you're, what you're actually doing is you're just pinching these fibers pretty tight. When you spin it up, it locks them in place. But they can come loose. So it's important to get a good twist on it. And as you twist, it'll start slowly start to build this kind of nice looking little, uh, little dubbing loop. Just like that and then what I do is I'll take a sharpie that I have that has a uh, it already has some velcro that I've attached to it and you'll just pick this out so you get the full length of these fibers and the zero gravity dub is so cool because it's essentially you're killing two birds with one stone right so like if you want to have some sort of marabou body and you also want some flash in it this this uh, material is just so rad for making sure that you get all the materials into that that you want. And then what we'll do is we'll slowly wrap this up. And as we go up, we'll preen it, which basically means with each wrap, you just pull it back so that you're not trapping any fibers. Again, just like that. I'm going to move this up here. Okay, and we'll just continue to wrap up just like this. Okay, and you just keep wrapping and pulling these fibers back so that they continue to go backwards. Just like that. All the way to the butt of these eyes. Just like that. Try not to get your stuff stuck. There you go. And then basically you'll just wrap this up. Close your loop. And make sure you tie it down pretty well. Get a couple wraps on either side of it. And we'll cut this. Right there. Okay. And so now you can kind of see this taking shape, right? You got a tail, a little bit of underbody that's going to add some bulk. And then essentially all that I do to this fly is I'll take another thing of craft fur. And I'll pull this up just like this. Again, taking from the bottom. And this one I'm going to probably use the full length up because I want it to kind of drape over the fly and create a really good profile. And so basically, again, we'll pull these little fibers out. Make sure that we get all these little mini hairs out of here. You'd call it under hair, but since it's synthetic, you don't. I wouldn't think that under hair would exist, but it does. So we'll take this, and again, we want this to drape over the top of the fly, just like that. So we'll tie this in, just like that. Okay. And then, essentially, this is where I'm. I'm usually done with this fly. I don't tie anything above those eyes. I don't. It doesn't really need anything because these eyes create this little pocket of water behind it when you strip it and it actually allows all of this to kind of bulk up and you get kind of get the full profile of the fly um, and it just makes life really easy and you can add all the kinds of fancy stuff to it from this point on for me though I've noticed no difference but you can always add a little bit of red or whatever kind of color you want to the collar um, if you're tying this specifically for excuse me for um, 
bass and stuff, adding some chartreuse or some sort of contrasty color, like even purple on this one or red. Like what I what I'll do a lot of times on these, especially if it's for bass, is I'll turn these upside down and I'll basically just get these ice dub fibers like kind of aligned. They're pretty short, so it's kind of not the easiest thing to do, but we'll line these up like this. And then what I'll do is I'll tie this in right at the collar behind the eyes. I'll tie that in. I'll just fold it back. And just like that. And now you have a fancy little purple collar on that. And then what I'll do is I'll couple, make a couple wraps up here. Then add some thread base above these booby eyes. And then I'll take this. And I'll do a couple, a couple with finishes. Just like that. And you're done. Just gotta snip it. And you're good. And if you want to be fancy, you can do this. Whoops. If you want them to have eyes, you can do that. So now it actually looks like a fish. But that right there is the simplest form of a booby pattern. And you can tie that fly just like you would a Klausner minnow to imitate any sort of bait fish or small fish. You can do shrimp, you know, any, any sort of crustacean too. Same kind of thing. And it, you fish these on a sinking line uh, if you're trying to fish deep. But a lot of times these are a super successful topwater pattern as well. Um, I know the guys at Rainey's always fish this pattern right here specifically for, um, for largemouth on top. So they'll just strip it as a popper and they'll come up and crush it. And they love this pattern. So essentially, that's basically all it is. As bass season approaches, uh, you're going to want some flies. I mean, I personally love catching bass on the fly, whether it's largemouth, smallmouth, um, wiper, striper. Like, there's so many different species that you can target. Um, bluegill, you know, any sort of panfish, crappie and stuff will all eat this. And these are also just super deadly trout streamers for fishing on lakes too. Um, I personally don't like fishing floating flies on river, like really floating flies, because this is a very buoyant fly. I don't like fishing these on rivers, just because I, I feel like I can't get the depth that I want personally, and I mean, you can run all kinds of different lines, but it's just my preference that I don't fish these on those. But you can tie these in all kinds of different colors, patterns. You can add, I'm gonna add a dot to this after this video. I'll do it right now. Basically, this becomes a shad pattern that I'm going to fish for wiper with when um, the local lake starts fishing pretty well. So basically you'll just throw a little bit of a spot there and boom, you have a striper or a wiper. If I can get that close enough. There you go. Well, thanks for watching this week's Fly Tank Friday. Um, that was, uh, this, these are probably some of my favorite flies to fish um, if I'm not fishing underneath an indicator, which is rare. <laughs> but, so as you see, we have this white one that was from the one I tied time in black and this black can be a deadly color especially as a night fly um, you, again you can strip that underneath it, or strip it subsurface with a sinking line or with a floating line is kind of like a popper or something like that and then this one I got kind of crazy with I even added like a little head on it and everything so yeah but they're a fun pattern and that's the cool thing about fly tying um, is you really get to uh, it's kind of just a nice creative outlet. Like you can kind of sit down and spend an hour or two just kind of mindlessly tying flies. And sometimes you come up with cool stuff. Sometimes they look awful. But most of the time, we're at whatever you tie will catch fish. So uh, it's kind of funny how that is. But um, yeah, so again, these flies are super easy. Um, huge shout out to the guys over at Snake River Fly for making this dub that is just like, oh, it's so good. Um, I'm going to link some links to the rainy stuff down below um, and to the Snake River Fly products. Those guys at Pocatello are good good people and um, they have a really, really rad product that I endorse fully. So go check that out and go give it a like and subscribe and uh, let me know what you want me to tie next week. Um, otherwise, I'll just tie what I want to tie. But I want your guys' input on it and let me know. Okay, later.